Hey guys, it's Kimberly from the Fat Quarter Shop, and we're so excited to have Jared Brenvig, a lotion designer, with us. Thanks for joining us. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. And she's going to show us something I've always wanted to learn, a quilt as you go technique. Her first book is called Quilt As You Go, Made Modern, and it's a best-selling C&T book. So the quilt she's gonna be showing you today is from the book, so grab the book and sew along with us. So Jira, where do we start? Well, I think the best place to start is talking about batting. Um, so when you quilt as you go, you wanna make sure you use um, needle punch batting, which we have here. Um, the reason being, oh, it also has to be, um, you want to make sure it's at least 80% cotton because if you start using battings with polyester, um, and I'll show you later, when you're quilting as you go, you iron your fabric onto the batting, so um, you'll get a little bit of crispifying, <laughs> so, for lack of a better word. So 80% um, cotton, I've tried it, it works, um, so do that. And then also, the needle punching works great. Um, Needle punch batting is basically, um, it's a literally batting that has been held together by being punched together with thousands of like little needles as opposed to be, um, being held to, together by reasons and glues. And it really helps um, since with Quilt As You Go, you're, you're quilting your blocks one block at a time and it helps with the natural warping you get when you quilt. So our first step is to cut blocks mm -hmm. of yep. batting. And so tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So. Um, the rule of thumb is bigger is better, um, and okay. I usually get, do um, approximately one inch bigger. And when you're cutting your batting, it doesn't... And your finished block. Yeah, so say like you, your finished block is going to be a nine and a half inch square, cut your batting approximately um, ten and a half by ten and a half. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you don't have to make sure it's exactly ten and a half by ten and a half. Um, and I have some great guidelines in this book um, okay. on some um, batting cutting techniques. Um, as well as a whole section on page 15 where it tells you, um, you know, if you want to do a crib size, throw size, all the way up to a king, king size quilt, how many batting blocks you'll need um, and how many squares that would equate to, and then how much yardage, how much batting yardage you'd have to buy, um, or prepackaged um, batting as well. Yeah, I think page 14 and 15 of her book are going to really help you make that beautiful quilt. So let's get to sewing. So this is a jelly roll friendly quilt, um, but for this particular quilt, I didn't use a jelly roll. Instead, I chose nine prints from the LeConnor collection, um, and they're each half yard prints, and then I cut them into two and a half inch strips. Um, and uh, you can find all the fabric requirements that you need um, in my book, Quilt As You Go Made Modern. Um, and the fabric requirements just depend on what size quilt you, you decide to make. Yeah, so the book really gives you a lot more options. Yeah, and um, this quilt, so this pattern is in the book, but today um, I'm showing you how we add lace to this quilt, so um, that wasn't mentioned in the book. It's just going to add a little bit of extra fun, and it's going to give you another technique that the book doesn't have, so we're just adding a little bit of more fun. Yeah, it adds a lot of charm to a project, or if you're making a baby quilt, it's a great sensory, um, sensory quilt. Um, but yeah, it just adds a lot, a lot to a project. So let's cut our two and a half inch strips and move to the next step. So I got my batting block that we talked about and my um, two and a half inch strips that we talked about. And um, the first thing you do is you basically just choose whatever strip that you want for um, the center. Um, and this is gonna become your guide for all the other strips. So you don't have to worry about snipping off the, the selvage just yet, you, but what you do is you just line it up here in the center, um, take some scissors, and then cut it, making sure that you have, you know, at least a quarter inch of extra fabric hanging off the batting. And so what we're going to want to do is sew this so that it's um, perfectly um, diagonal in, in the center of your batting block. And to do that, what I like to do is um, to mark the center of each end of the strip um, by just ironing it. So um, take your strip over to the ironing board, and then I just fold one end in half like that, and then quickly press it, and then repeat with the other end, like that. Press it. Okay, and that gives you a nice little marking on each end where your center is. And then what you're going to do is align um, the center of each end with the corners of your batting block. 
So here you just kind of have to, it's hit or miss, you just have to take a little peek. That one lined up pretty well. And actually that lined up perfectly. And so then you just pin it there. But um, yeah, so the corner of the batting block is aligned up with that, uh, with the center of the end of the strip that I pressed. So what I'm gonna do is just pin that in place. And you can also take an iron and just do a quick press if you want to make sure it, um, it just kind of helps keep it there, keep it in place. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pin this. Um, and as you know, the first block you make, it, it might seem kind of slow and it may be a little bit scary if you've never tried quilt as you go, but once you make one, um, the rest just comes so easy and you'll be making so many blocks. So now that I got this center strip pinned down, um, um, the next thing I'm gonna do is choose which two strips you want to have on either side of it. So I'm gonna go with this, and you're just gonna line it, take your fabric scissors and cut, and again, make sure that you have at least, you know, a quarter inch of fabric hanging off the batting. And then um, choose a strip that you want on the other side as well. And then once you have these two strips chosen and your center strip in place, then it's time to sew. So the first step is to sew um, this strip onto the middle. So with the right sides facing together, align it up. Um, and make sure you know you have that at least one fourth inch sticking outside of the batting. I didn't there initially. And then bring it over to the machine. And here I'm using a walking foot and I'm going to sew a one fourth inch seam al allowance all the way down the strip. Um, the stitch length I'm using is 2.5. And then open that up, and then you're going to repeat on the other side as well. So take your other strip with the right sides facing together align it up on that middle strip. You're using that middle strip as a guide for all the other strips. Bring it over to the sewing machine and then just sew one fourth inch seam allowance all the way down the strip again. So now that we've sewn the strips on either side of the center strip, we are going to take the iron and press them so they lay nice and flat. Um, and I actually like to use the steam setting on my iron. Make sure it lays nice and flat. And then you're basically going to repeat with the remainder strips. So you're going to choose a strip for the next side. And then trim so that a little bit um, overhangs that batting block. And then do the same for the other side as well. Trim it. And then just like what you did with these two pieces, you're going to um, put them right sides facing together, take them over to the sewing machine, stitch your 1 4 inch seam allowance along the edge, and then take it back here and press. And then you just have two more corners left. So you'll take your next strip, line it up, trim it, Choose another strip, and this is where you can get really creative. Just choosing your own strips as you go, kind of like improvisational style quilting. Um, trim it, and then repeat again. So you're going to, with right sides facing together, so your one fourth inch seam allowance, and press. So now that we have all the strips sewn on, the next thing what we're going to do is. Um, trim off all the excess fabric sticking outside of the batting. Um, and to do that, I really recommend getting a rotating cutting mat. This is a 13 inch rotating cutting mat. And um, this is one of my most used tools and it's great for quilt as you go. It really makes this process go by quickly. So if you don't have one yet, go treat yourself to one because you'll use it a ton for quilt as you go um, as well as just traditional style quilting. So what you do is you flip over the block so that the batting is facing up and then you just align a ruler along the edge of the batting. And you trim. 
rotate, line it up again, trim, rotate, line it up, trim, rotate, and then do the final one. And you can see just how nice that is, having a rotating cutting mat pow. How quickly that comes out. And if you have a little, yeah, there you go. Just, so then you have all these scrap pieces you just take off. And so now we have um, a cleaned up block and we're ready to add the lace. Um, and real quick, I'm using a 60 millimeter rotary cutter. Um, and I first started using a 60 mil millimeter cutter um, for cutting batting, it can cut up to four layers of batting at a time, so it's excellent for that. But um, basically, once I started using this size, I never went back <laughs> to the smaller, and now I just use it for cutting fabric as well. So now that we have our block all cleaned up, the next step is to quilt it. But for this quilt, we are going to add lace. And so I'm going to be using the Laconer lace. Um, and the really cool and unique thing about this lace is it has these eyes down the center of the lace. And in between these eyes marks the center of the lace. So I like to use that as a guide. Um, what you're going to do is first trim the lace like that so that you have enough to go right here. And then you are going to align this seam with the center of the eyes. And the cool thing about this lace is you can just look right there and see it. And then um, you can go ahead and pin it, pin it in place. I just use a couple of pins. Um, and honestly, once you get going on these blocks, you may feel that you don't even need to use pins anymore. But if you're a pinner, maybe you'll just keep pinning. It just, just do what works for you. That's what I always like to say. So just pin it there so that it stays in place. And then you're going to do the same here. Trim it, and then align those eyes. And there's really no right side to the lace. Um, you're going to align this seam with the center of those eyes, and then pin. OK, so now we are going to attach the lace to the block um, just by sewing um, right in between those eyes, just like I mentioned before. And just remove the pin as you go. Those eyes really work as a great guide. Okay. And now that we've attached the lace, the next part is quilting the block. And here you can get as creative as you want. You can um, do free motion quilting. You can, um, you know, quilt a bunch of, if you have fun stitches on your sewing machine, you can do um, fun embroidery stitches going down it. Um, it's really up to you. What I did is I just kept it simple and I just quilted um, lines, straight lines right along the seams. I just love using those seams as a guide. Um, and to do that, I basically just align the edge of my foot right up right along the seam. And then just keep going until you have your whole block quilted. OK, so now that we have our lace attached to our, um, to our block and the block all quilted, the next step is to square it down using a 9 and a half inch square ruler. 
And if you recall, we started with a 10 and a half inch square of batting. And that extra inch of batting is to um, account for any shrinkage you may have gotten when you were doing your quilting. But if you um, use the needle punch batting that we talked about in the beginning, um, you should get minimal, minimal um, shrinkage. And so what we're going to do is use this diagonal line um, on your ruler as a guide. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to center this diagonal line with the center of your strip. So you just place it right on top, and here you really just eyeball it, and you can adjust it side, you know, up or down, um, just to make sure um, you have it as center as possible. And then what I like to do is just take, this is a one inch ruler. I just like to take this um, and put it right along the diagonal just to make sure you have approximately an inch on each side. Don't freak out if you don't have a perfect inch because it probably won't be, but you just want to make sure that there's consistency on each side. And so that looks pretty darn good, just eyeballing it like that. That's pretty centered. And then the last part is we're going to trim off all this um, excess block all around the ruler. Um, and again, this is where the rotating cutting mat really comes in handy. Um, before you do any cutting, just make sure um, everything is within your nine and a half inch square ruler so that you have, um, you know, make sure your lace is in there. Okay. Cut, turn. Yeah, this rotating cutting mat is great. Um, if you have the right tools, it makes makes it easy. I got them all just like that. So you remove all the excess, and there you go. You have a lovely quilt as you go block um, that you made without even um, using a precise pattern. So here we have four completed um, quilt as you go blocks that have been quilted and all squared up. And so I'm going to show you how to join these blocks together using the block to block method from my first book, Quilt as you go Made Modern. Um, and so uh, what you do is you right sides facing together um, and I'm going to sew a 1 4th inch seam allowance um, right down the block. Um, be sure, and this is important, that you start and end your stitch with a back stitch. And since we use lace here, I like to typically just do a quick pin to make sure that the lace lays flat. Okay, then bring it over to the machine. Um, and here you definitely want to be using a walking foot. Okay, so here I've sewn, I've attached my blocks within each row together. Um, and as mentioned before, I made sure to start and end my stitches with a back stitch. And so the next thing that we need to do is flip your row over and we are going to press this seam so that it lays nice and flat. I like to use the steam setting on the iron. It just makes it go press flat quicker like that. Um, and um, in the beginning, I talked about batting and how it's important to use at least 80% cotton. And this is one of the reasons why, because your iron will have a lot of contact with the batting at this part. Okay, and then just take some scissors, and what you're going to do is just cut the excess of bulk, bulk off at the ends of the seams here. I just kind of do it like a diagonal. Just cutting it off like that. And if you were, um, you know, making a full-size quilt, um, you would just do that for your entire row. And so then I'll repeat on my other row. Press it open so it's nice and flat. just trim off that excess bulk. Like that. Okay, then after you've done that for all the blocks within your row, the last step here for your quilt top 
is to join your two rows together, so with the right side spacing together, make sure that lace lies nice and flat. And you're just gonna want to um, pin the beginning and end of your rows as well as all the intersections. Place a pin there. And at the beginning. And you'll place the pin at the end and then you just take it back over to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch um, a 1 4 inch seam allowance going all the way down your row, um, making sure to start and end your um, stitch with a back stitch. Okay, so what I've done here already is I've sewn um, a 1 4 inch seam allowance um, down my row and I made sure to start and end my stitch with a back stitch. And just like what I did when I joined the rows together, um, I then press the seam open all the way down my row. Um, and then I also um, went ahead and cut the bulk off at the ends of this. And so the last step is to attach your backing. And so with the traditional, um, here's how the top looks, I forgot to show that, comes together beautifully. Um, you know, with the traditional quilt, um, you have your, your quilt top, um, you're gonna base together your quilt top, your batting, and your backing fabric. And then you're gonna put hundreds of pins together and then you're gonna put the whole quilt underneath your machine and then you know, do your quilting. And for a lot of people that could be physically tiresome or a lot of people kind of shy away from that. But the cool thing about Quilt As You Go is you've already quilted your box. So um, the basing part is actually really quick and easy. Um, you just, since you've already gotten all your intricate quilting done and the batting is attached, really minimal pinning is needed um, to attach your backing fabric. And um, so you'll lay down your backing fabric um, so that the wrong side is facing up. And then, um, you know, most, like, since this is just a smaller um, example, I won't put painter's tape, but, you know, normally you would um, put tape on the corners. And I go over this more um, in my book. And then you just lay your um, already quilted quilt top on top of the batting. And then um, what I like to use are curved safety pins. There's just this little curve in here. I don't know if you've ever tried them, but basically when you, um, when you pin them, it just, because of that curve, it just it pops right back up like that, which is really nifty. And it makes pinning quick. So what I do is I like to um, place a curved safety pin um, at all the intersections of your quilt, including the, um, um, the beginning and ends of your rows. So it would go here, 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 and then at the corners, intersection there, um, corners, intersection there. Um, and then the way that you attach the backing um, is just by doing um, a simple stitch in the ditch right along, um, right along the seams here. And as you go, you just remove the pins as you're stitching. And so you'll you'll um, stitch in the ditch all the way down here. And you can just do it, you know, um, row by row, and then you'll stitch in the ditch here. And so um, what you get is a backing. So here's the finished quilt here. What you get is a backing that looks like that, um, where you just kind of have a grid um, of stitching. So th these were the lines that I stitched in the, in the ditch in the back. And then all of your intricate quilting is in the front. And then um, just choose your method of binding and you're all done.